Okay, so as some of you may have already found out, the Photoshop Auto Align doesn't always work perfectly. Now, obviously I find the Auto Align feature in Photoshop excellent when it works well, but it is very unreliable. And for something like Stars or Astro, where the details are often not really strong, okay, we don't have too many kind of sharp contrasty edges to auto align with, often Photoshop has issues aligning. Now, that can be through different things, clouds in the image that are moving, um, possibly I'm thinking even taking the images a little bit too far apart might give Photoshop issues, so try and take those stacked images one after the other. That might seem to help a little bit. Possible things like a little bit of wind moving the tripod and these kind of things can cause issues too. So there is a way to relatively easily align. I've got these images here. These are actually not my images. These are Karen's images and they're a beautiful set of astro images. And you can see if we zoom in there, that they're very, very noisy, and that's quite normal for Astro, but all of the details are there that we need. And we've only got the three images here, but this will be a good example. You can manually align as many images as you like, and generally, I would suggest six or more gives a really great result for noise reduction when we're aligning and median stacking these images. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would manually align these images. Now, I got this tip from a great website called Lonely Spec. I'll put the uh, website up at the bottom of this tutorial here. Check them out. Okay, so this little tip came from those guys. What we do is we turn off all bar the bottom layer here. Okay, so we've got the bottom layer here and you can see as I turn them on, the stars are moving. And for whatever reason, that one's slightly different colored, but we won't worry about that for this example. Okay, so just having the bottom one turned on, move up to the second layer in the stack, turn that one on, and then change the blend mode here to difference. Okay, and this is going to make it much easier to manually align. Because basically what happens is, Every star that doesn't align with its star below turns white, essentially, and when we get them to align, they turn black. We're now going to use Free Transform to align these, but before we do, move up to the View menu, and if you have your Snap uh, feature on here, which will tend to snap your images together when Photoshop feels like they're in perfect alignment, which is not going to work in this case, turn snap off because it'll kind of be a bit jerky uh, with that snap feature on. So turn that off and then press command or control T to free transform. Command or control plus to zoom into the center here. About so far. I mean I've got full res raw files here and I'm in at 66%. We could probably do this at 50% also. Zoom right into the middle and first of all all we do is click and drag and you can kind of see how it starts blacking out like that. That's exactly what we want. Now, how did I get there? Basically, we need to find similar features. Can we see these kind of biggish blobs here? One, two, one, two, one, two, and a couple of other ones here. That means, or well, they're the ones that we need to try and sort of bring over the top of each other, if you like, and whoop. There we go, perfect, okay. So don't worry about the surrounding outsides, we just want that kind of noisy black feel without any visible white stars in the center for the time being. Okay, it's a bit of a game this thing, it's a bit like a puzzle. If we hold down spacebar and navigate to the top left corner, and we essentially need to do the same thing again, align the stars in the corner. But this time when we do it, we're going to hold down Command on a Mac or Control on a PC, which will allow us to individually move this corner independently of the other corners. And again, you'll see 
if I let go for a second, see these features? You can see them kind of doubled up. So it's just a case of, again, holding down Command or Control and getting them to align as good as possible. Again, something like that. We're just concerned about the very corner, the, the, the section directly closest to the corner for now. And you'll see as we start to align all corners, it will take care of everything else. Again, holding down Command or Control, and aligning each individual feature, getting close, just the corner we're really concerned with. Pretty close. Down in the bottom right. Again, we've got the foreground here. We're not concerned about that. Just the stars up uh, in this region here. Again, Command or Control. See how that just blacks out once we get those stars to line up. Spacebar and drag over to the other side. Command or Control. Click and drag. Okay, and then it's just a case actually. Let's just adjust that a little. Didn't look perfect. That's much better. We can then move around and potentially, I'm pretty happy with that corner still. This one could maybe do with a little tweak. Yes. Just get it as good as you can. That's pretty good. And again, a slight tweak here. And it's just a case of just working your way clockwise around. Just tweak. And look how good that's looking now. Can't see too many. We can see some little kind of ghosty ones in the middle, but that won't affect. That's pretty good. Okay. Click the thank you very much button at the top. And you'll see now that free transform is off, it looks even better, which is great. And the next thing we do is we can change the blend mode of that layer back to normal and then turn it off. Now, the reason we turn it off is because we want to use the same template for each alignment, okay? It's a bit like Chinese whispers. If we keep kind of using the new template, or say we use this one as the template, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, then by the time we get to the end, it's likely to probably be much further out of alignment with the first one because we keep maybe creating tiny little issues as we move up. So use the same base template to align all of your photos, whether that be three, six, or 10 or more. Okay, so moving up to the next layer, turn it on and select difference as the blend mode. I'll zoom back out here. Okay, and pressing Command or Control T for free transform, we zoom in again, again, roughly around 50%. and we need to do the same. So I can see these little features here again. So just click and drag. It's proving a little bit more difficult. That's close. Maybe I'll zoom in a little further. Ah, oh, that's better. Okay. Now, because these ones are probably a little bit further apart, we're only getting a small section of those stars aligning in the center, but the same will apply when we go to the edges here, holding down Command or Control. And there we go there. So just look for those obvious kind of details that are doubled up. As I move over to this corner, I can see these rather big kind of uh, dots here star clusters. And again, it's mainly the corner we need to be concerned with, like so, initially. There we go. And then holding spacebar to navigate over to the other side. Holding command or control. 
We've got that corner and you can see everything is starting to align now. We'll just come back around one more time. Much better now. Again, holding spacebar to allow us to navigate properly. Much better there. Just one more down the bottom here should be enough. And then you can see that's looking near perfect. Click OK. Change that back to normal blend mode. And as I said, if you had more, you would turn off that layer and work on the next one in difference mode. But we now have all three aligned. If we zoom back out. You can see all the roux is not aligned anymore, but the stars will be. Okay. And that's exactly what we want. Because we've aligned this manually, we don't need to mask out all the roux right this second. You'll see it kind of make a little bit of a mess of the bottom of the image here, but that doesn't really matter. We can use that sky and, uh, and drop in a new foreground. Okay, so now we need to select all the images. So hold down shift, or well, sorry, first of all, click on the top layer, then hold down shift and click on the bottom layer. They're now all selected. Move up to the layer menu, smart objects, convert to smart object. Okay, you can see those three layers have now been converted into one smart object. We move up to the layer menu again, smart objects again, stack mode, and median. Now, as I said, we get that kind of strange ghostly effect as uh, Uluru has moved around throughout the image, but the stars haven't moved. So you can see, let's zoom right in here. Uh, we'll go to 66. There we go. There is before we did the median stack. Look at all that noise. And then after. A really beautiful, nice, clean file there. Now, as I said before, you probably want to do five or six or more images when you stack these to get a really great result. Um, but that is already a dramatic improvement with just three. Now, from here, what do we do? Okay, so. We can just go and grab one of the original uh, files. We could even stack a whole bunch of foreground images to get a slightly better foreground file. Or we could use another image taken from earlier in the night at twilight with much higher quality pixels than what we have here. Okay, something taken at ISO 100, for example. But for the time being, let me just show you how to bring these two together using one of the high ISO files. So pressing Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy. Click back on our median stack sky and press Command or Control V. Okay, now we have one on top of the other there. And if I click on the Move tool, I can just move it so that my new foreground basically covers that weird ghosting effect, okay? Now it's not going to be, the stars are going to shift ever so slightly in the sky, I guess. Um, it might not be for the purists, um, but this is the way I would normally do it. Then all we need to do is add a layer mask to our new foreground layer there, and then B for brush, and switching over to a black brush, 100% opacity, 100% flow, and 0% hardness for now. We can paint in. We could even use the quick selection tool. In fact, let's do that. That's probably going to be even easier. Let me delete that layer mask. Grab the quick selection tool. Just make a selection of that sky. Perfect. A little bit there, let's just grab that little little nodule. Okay, that looks pretty well perfect. Add a layer mask. And actually what's happened there is the layer mask is back the front. You can see if I hold down Option or Alt and click on that mask, it's blacked out my foreground and uh, 
brought the sky through in white. We want it the other way around. So if we press Command or Control I to invert, you can see now the foreground is in white, which is what we want. White reveals, black conceals. Just clicking away. And that should be pretty good. Okay, there's a little bit of a ghosty uh, element on the left hand side of Uluru here. If I press the move tool and make sure I'm clicked onto layer one there, I can just bump that around so that it covers up that area. Okay, and that's all there really is to it. As I said, normally I would probably use an image from Twilight taken at ISO 100 and darkened down, like I showed you in the previous tutorial, but you can use the original Astro foreground as well. I hope you find that really useful. It's a nice workaround for a uh, you know unreliable step in Photoshop, which is the Auto Align. If Auto Align works, go ahead and use it. It's fantastic and fast. And if it doesn't, don't stress. We can still reasonably easily manually align our astro photos and still get the high quality benefits of median stacking. Thanks for watching along and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.